Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I want to discuss my views and experiences with the CF Express Type B card functionality of the Nikon Z62. This gentleman here. Let me start with a health warning. I do not pretend to be an expert in storage media, so this post contains my personal views and experiences. About four years ago, Nikon introduced the first mirrorless cameras, the Z6 and the Z7. Besides the introduction of a new lens mount, the Z, one of the first things that caught many people's attention was that these cameras had only one card slot. And this was not an SD card slot, but a card slot for XQD cards. I and many people had never heard about these cards before, but the advantages that were communicated included a higher writing speed for demanding video formats and that, compared to SD cards, these cards were less prone to errors or crashes. We also quickly learned that these cards also were extremely expensive. Because the autofocus on the Z6 and Z7 received a lot of complaints at the time these cameras were introduced, and because I had a couple of bad experiences with the poorly organized, incompetent and highly expensive after-sales service of Nikon, both in the Netherlands as well as in Switzerland, I decided not to invest in this system. Instead, I bought a Panasonic Lumix S5. A great camera, especially for video. This camera had a normal dual SD card slot configuration and therefore did not use the exotic XQD cards or its successor, the CF Express Type B cards. Fast forward to two months ago. For a specific series of projects, I needed lenses that were either not available or very expensive in the Lumix world. And since I still had a lot of F-mount glass, I bought a Z6 II, because in the meantime the Z6 and the Z7 series were upgraded to version 2, which had much better um, autofocus were also faster in general because uh, the fact that they used uh, two chips and they were also upgraded um, with a dual card slot. One card slot for the successor of XQD cards, the other one for the CF Express Type B cards. Despite the fact that I never had an SD card failure on any of my many cameras before, I liked the additional security a second card slot offers, so I decided to purchase a CF Express Type B card as well. And that purchasing process proved to be quite a journey. Given the fact that CF Express Type B cards are extremely expensive per gigabyte and also seem to be prone to quality control uh, issues, I decided to do some extensive web research. After checking out all kinds of reviews on photo, blogs, YouTube and Amazon, I went for the safest option, at least what I thought the safest option would be, a SanDisk 128 gigabyte card. I would have preferred a card with a higher capacity, but the pricing of 256 gigabyte cards from well-known brands like Sendix is just prohibitive. I also needed a reader, and that also provided to be quite a complex uh, search journey as well. Prices differed tremendously, and it was hard for me to see which advantages which readers actually offered. In the end, I settled for a Sabrent reader. I never heard about the brand Sabrent before but it got very good reviews and the price seemed reasonable. So, after using this camera card combination for a couple of weeks, what are my thoughts of the Nikon Z6 II with the CF Express Type B card? I've broken up my findings in five areas. Reliability, backup functionality, recording limitations, overheating, readout speed and quality differences. Let me start with reliability. The first occasion I used the CF Express Type B card was the yearly festival in our local church. <coughs> and the first thing that alarmed me was that the camera already displayed the warning hot card after only 5 minutes. And mind you, I was only shooting in 1080 60p, so not even in 4K. I'd never seen this type of warnings when using my S5 or any other cameras uh, for that matter, so I was quite concerned. When I got home I wanted to load the pictures in Lightroom and the video footage in iMovie. Both Lightroom and iMovie indicated they recognized the files, at least I could see the previews, but when I wanted to process the pictures I got the message that the original files were missing. 
After my initial panic, I solved this by copying the content of my CF Express uh, Type B card directly on my hard disk and imported the media in Lightroom and iMovie from there. Finally, I got everything to work, but I did not exactly instill confidence in this new storage medium. Having said that, I've used the camera and the CF Express B card quite intensively in the last couple of weeks and never encountered this problem again. Backup functionality. What I had not realized is that the security slash backup functionality offered by the dual card system of the Z6 II can only be used for pictures and not for video. I do not have this limitation on any of my other cameras, not on my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, not on my Lumix S5 or on my uh, Fujifilm X-T2. I can understand why it would have to back up my SD on a slower write speed if my primary uh, disk was the uh, CF Express Type B card. Um, however, no backup at all. Also not if I use my SD card as a primary card and the CF Express B card as a backup. I really don't get it. The knowledge that it is not possible to backup video in a camera is apparently not widely spread either. I could not find this information in my Nikon user manual, which only described how to use the dual card slot functionality for pictures, but does not mention the word video in this context at all. I had to discover it after buying the camera on a forum in DP Review. Apparently, a lot more people were unaware of this limitation as well. So, Nikon buyer, beware. Item number three, recording limitations. I do not understand why camera in this price range has a 30 minutes recording limit for every video format due to potential overheating. That is a real issue if you want to record interviews or concerts. For comparison reasons, the Lumix S5 has no recording limits for more than half of the video formats it supports. Item 4. Overheating. In order to find out how serious uh, the limitations were posed by this uh, overheating, I decided to do a series of tests. And I discovered something weird. For all my overheating tests, I put my uh, Nikon Z6 II on a tripod in my, uh, my room, room temperature approximately 20 degrees Celsius, and let it continuously record. When I tried to record 30 minutes uh, 4K 60p, with only an SD card in the camera, the camera recorded a full 30 minutes, without a problem. When I tried to record 30 minutes in 4K 60p with the CF Express Type B card, the camera first showed a hot card warning, then a warning that the camera would be shut off with a countdown timer of 30 seconds, and then it actually shut down. I could not record more than 28 minutes and 55 seconds. And what was really weird was that if I tried to record 30 minutes um, 4K 60p on my SD card uh, as a primary uh, card with the CF Express um, Type B card just inserted in the camera, the camera also gave a hot card warning and later a hot camera warning and I was also unable to record the full 30 minutes. By the way, what was also interesting um, it did not make a difference if I kept the selfie screen open or closed. So let me show you a number of people have the idea that if you basically, you know, uh, move the selfie screen back, that the heat uh, dissipation is, is better. But I did not find any, uh, any differences. Item number five, the readout speed. For me, the readout speed of my cards is not very important. I'm happy to wait a couple of minutes. And personally, I did not notice a lot of difference um, if I read out my pictures from a CF Express Type B card in Lightroom. Um, however, I do notice my videos load a lot faster in iMovie. Finally, quality differences. Did I see any quality differences between video recorded on a CF Express Type B card or an SD card? Interestingly enough, and I cannot prove it, I have the idea that the video footage I recorded on the CF Express Type B card is smoother, especially the panning shots. However, I need to, uh, to do some more comparisons and to make some more uh, footage to see if this really makes a difference or if it's just my imagination. So, what are my overall conclusions? Well, first of all, I'm not sure how mature the technology is, especially not for the use in prosumer cameras. 
all the warnings about hot cars and cameras that have to shut down to prevent overheating really does not instill much confidence. Certainly not in comparison with a proven technology like the SD cards. Also, and what I have not mentioned before, is that the card reader becomes ridiculously hot as well. And it stays hot even if all the data has already been transferred and the reader and card simply have stayed connected to the computer. I also think the unpredictable and short recording times limit the operational use of the cameras. I would never record an interview with the Z6 II on a CF Express Type B card. I would be nervous all the time even when the camera would unexpectedly stop and how much time it would need to cool down. Secondly, the Panasonic S5 Secondly, the Panasonic S5 Mark II X, arguably a much better spec hybrid camera as far as video capabilities are concerned than the Z6 II, comes equipped with two SD card slots. So the fact that Panasonic, which applies the CF Express Type B card functionality in some of its older cameras, like the GH6, does not apply it um, in the S5 Mark II X, also makes me doubt the necessity of these cards. Perhaps CF Express Type B cards do only make sense for professionals who need a maximum performance for 4, 6K or 8K footage and have much better cameras to deal with the heat dissipation. But then again, you would expect most of them to record externally. Perhaps CF Express Type B cards do only make sense for professionals who really need a maximum performance for 4K, 6K or 8K footage. Um, but then again, uh, you expect most of them to record externally and also use a different camera. So, if you're a Z6 II user like me, what should you do? Well, I would say by all means buy the CF Express Type B card to ensure you can back up your pictures internally. You can also use the CF Express Type B card for short clips, only a couple of minutes here and there. And as far as my purchases are concerned, I'm very happy with my Sabrent card reader and I can really recommend it. Also, I'm not sure other cards would perform better as far as overheating is concerned as the SanDisk 128GB card, um, so that might also be a sensible choice for you. However, as I said, I'm the first to admit that I'm definitely not an expert in this area. So I'm very curious what your perspectives are. Do you have the same experiences? Though my statement makes sense, let me know. I would love to learn from you guys. I hope you found this video helpful. Please feel free to like this post and leave your comments below. And of course, I would highly, highly appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. And as always, happy shooting.